Good day everyone. This is the pre-release of uh, version 4.7 of Gerotic Motion. We're going to uh, talk about the changes that have occurred during the summer and this is the start of the new development season so we'll show what's been added since last version. Uh, the first thing that you've got is sprockets and you'll see on the Spur Gears page we have a new selection for sprocket. Now, spr these sprockets follow industry standards. There's not much that you can adjust on them other than to select the type of chain that you're going to use. And we have everything from a bicycle with no derailleur, with derailleur, and various types of chain. Uh, simply select the type of chain you have, and there is the uh, sprocket that you're going to be using. Uh, we do have one selection called pointed, which brings your uh, sprocket teeth out to a point. Some people prefer a point on their sprockets, some do not. Um, if pointed is not selected, they're uh, attenuated to the uh, outside diameter that is um, specified in the sprocket specifications. Um, other than that, they're pretty easy to use. Just like any gear, you simply create and put them on the screen. The only difference here is that when you do create a gear and put it on the screen, you'll see that the face width is automatically set to the standard size of width for that sprocket. Uh, it's important that sprockets be a particular width because they do match the uh, roller width of the chain. Uh, when you s place a sprocket, much like timing gears, you can place them at any distance or angle away from your uh, original sprocket that you've placed on the screen. That's it for sprockets. The only other change is the CTM module, which is the centroid toothing module, which has been added and will be the focus of some of the development as we uh, begin the season. The centroid toothing module allows us to play with shapes. Um, Non-circular gears is basically what it does. And you'll see here on the left-hand side of the screen a selection between DXF, elliptical, and roots blower. Let's go to Roots Blower so that we can talk about um, gears in general for a moment. If you go to the Roots Blower, you'll see the, a very strange looking Roots Blower. It's actually an Order 1, which is pretty much an impossible Roots Blower. Um, selecting Order 2 will give you your more conventional type of Roots Blower. And as you can see, um, they rotate on a 1 to 1 unity basis this is standard for a roots blower. Now the reason I wanted to start with roots blowers is so that we could discuss for a moment what is a gear and what is not a gear because it's going to become important when you begin to develop your own shaped gears. Uh, if you watch these roots blowers rotate you'll notice that the driven gear, the gear on the right here, does not change speed as the ratio of pitch radiuses changes. This means it is not a gear. These two gears are not rolling on one another. They give that appearance, but in actual fact there is slippage between the gears. Roots blowers are meant to be driven by two gears on their shaft in behind, uh, like two spur gears, at a one-to-one -one ratio. So say two 20-tooth gears behind here uh, driving these roots. Uh, you can basically tell whether a gear is real or not by whether or not it slips. If it slips, it's not really a gear. Uh, it's a mechanism. Roots blowers slip. Right now as the large lobe goes in, it is going faster than the small lobe and that means that these are not um, properly rolling curves. If we take a look at a and two ellipticals, these are properly rolling gears. This uh, pinion gear is rolling on the surface of the first gear. That's one of the rules of meshing, and it's the way that you can tell whether two gears are uh, truly following the rules of meshing. This will become important when we begin to load DXF-based gears. Uh, so here on the screen, I've selected the elliptical, and as before on the previous elliptical screens, you see that you can select uh, various orders of wheel or pinion. The difference here is you can also select a planetary arrangement. Uh, where the pinion will roll inside of the uh, primary driven gear or primary driving gear. Um, in addition to having standard ellipticals of uh, any order up to order 9, you can also have what is called a modified elliptical. I'm going to turn off planetary and go to modified ellipticals. And you can see that these gears look a little strange. 
this is because the ellipses are modified by a modification function, uh, which guarantees that you will have a properly rolling gear. The pitch curves are integer uh, representations in order to each other, and uh, the modifications are guaranteed to begin and end at a spot where the corresponding gear also begins and ends, thus guaranteeing a rolling pitch curve. Uh, we have a modification coefficient, uh, which can be set to any number above 1, which allows you to modify the ellipse a fair degree. You can see here a very strange looking uh, elliptical pair. When you select planetary gear on any two gears, you'll have to be careful that it is actually possible for those gears to roll inside one another. You can see that this gear actually clips off when the large lobe comes around into the inside of the planetary. Um, it will be the responsibility of the user to always check his gears to make sure that they actually physically can do their job. This is because things are about to get very complicated when we begin to consider um, the gears that you yourself have have written or have drawn. Uh, the reason that I go into all this explanation is that it's inevitable, I think, that somebody is going to draw a picture of Mickey Mouse and wonder why a picture of Goofy doesn't come up and roll as a corresponding subjugate gear. Gears have to follow the laws of meshing, and Garotic's going to take great pains to try to correct gears for you in terms of their shapes, uh, but there is no guarantee of any shape being allowed to work. You can see when I go to an order 3 on the planetary for this modified elliptical, uh, now things do actually begin to work. And this is a planetary which would actually work. Uh, this would have a logarithmic speed change as the gears roll. It's not very obvious probably in this video. Um, but the speed of two gears is um, a ratio based on their respective radii uh, at the point of contact and this gear is now speeding up and once it hits the flat part here it will instantly slow down quite a bit. We can probably see that better if we go to a, uh, a non-planetary one-to-one. -one. The driving gear on the left is now running at a constant rate and yet the gear on the right uh, is speeding up quite a bit until it gets to its end position where it pretty much comes to a stop. This would be a logarithmic spiral gear uh, of a certain type, uh, but it is actually just a modified ellipse. Uh, it's been proven that any two gears that mesh together are really modified ellipses from circular gears to strange shapes. And the reason we mention strange shapes is uh, because it is possible now to select DXF. When you install the program, um, because your gear data file may not be in C colon gearotic motion, you may want to look in that uh, gear data folder just because there is a new folder called Centrodes uh, which has in it several examples that you can take a look at. For example, if I open up this uh, drawing of a gear called Peanut, uh, when we draw a DXF gear, we only draw the left hand gear. The right hand gear is created by gearotic motion as the subjugate curve to the curve that we've drawn. So all I've drawn in this particular case is this peanut shaped uh, gear. When you draw a gear you do not draw the shaft hole or a shaft picture at all. The only thing your audit motion will accept as a DXF is a primary closed shape and at the moment uh, although that will be corrected you can only draw them in vectric uh, products. This is because they save DXS as, as a contour object, and I don't know of any other CAD program that does. But at the moment, there is a bug in SG Core which does not uh, allow me to get the information as to which direction a curve is going. So I'm waiting for the developers to fix that bug before I turn on uh, generalized DXF imports for everyone. So here in this case, I've drawn this picture of a peanut. And you can see the conjugate gear does not look like a roots blower. This is because a roots blower is not a true gear. The actual subjugate to this peanut is this uh, odd-shaped, um, wedge-shaped object, almost like a bowling pin, uh, which will roll on this object. Now, there's a couple modifications that you can do. As I said, all I've drawn is the peanut, but it is possible for me to raise that peanut to a higher order. Here, I've raised the drawing that I've made to a second order. Um, it is possible to 
put a gear inside a gear but again here you want to make sure that the gears will actually fit sometimes they will sometimes they won't in this particular case you can see that this gear does fit as a planetary gear so you would be able to use that as uh, as your as an, uh, a creatable object now let's turn off planetary and go back to one to one order so you can see what other games you can play here you can see that the subjugate as is as before uh, looks something like a bowling pin it's also possible to shift the centers on imported DXX. You can't do this to an ellipse or to a roots blower because they're mathematically created from formula. However, when you draw a DXF, there's no formulas involved, so you are free to shift its center. To do that, you can see down here uh, on the left-hand side, we have a thing called wheel center X and Y. I can, for example, um, type a number into the X and Y and hit uh, center and it will move that shaft center or I can hit the click button which will allow me to click inside the gear to set its center to a new location as you can see I just clicked the center over to one end of the peanut and we get a new conjugate gear um, which matches that shape now using this you can get some awfully weird looking gears uh, the number of shapes that you can get is almost unlimited, but they have to follow the laws of meshing. As I said, Gerotic Motion will try very hard to make sure that the laws of meshing are followed. It will even correct some gears to ensure that. For example, let's click and really move our center to an extreme uh, on this gear. As you can see, we get a very elliptical type of motion but probably more pronounced than your typical elliptical gears. Uh, it is possible to create internal uh, planetary gears, but as you can see, this particular one would not work because as it swings out, it's going to obliterate part of the planetary. Again, this is inevitable depending on what you've drawn or what the picture of what you've done is drawn. Let's load a different DXF so we can get a, a perhaps a better idea of that. Here is a now, again, all I've drawn is the colored gear on the left. Gerotic Motion has computed the uh, gear on the right, which would match that. Now, I'm going to hit the click button and move that gear center uh, into an impossible place. As you can see, the gear that I've drawn has now changed its shape. Gerotic has modified it to make sure that it will actually roll as a conjugate pair. Um, this is not always successful. In this case, it is. You can see that we have two extremely strange looking gears, and they're going to roll properly around each other. Now, the release of this CTM module is going to be in phases. At the moment, you can't create anything, although you can play with the shapes to see what will be available in the end. Um, the first step of the next release will be to allow you to import these as objects onto the project screen so that you could actually cut them because in some cases you're not going to care whether gears have teeth. If you draw them appropriately, it's quite possible to draw two centrodes that don't require teeth. They simply roll on the basis of the fact of their shape. Um, after you've been able to load them into the project screen, the next work will start on toothing. And the way it's envisioned is that you'll be able to tooth any section of a gear or a complete gear in order to get rotation on that gear. Some gears, again, as by virtue of their shape, will rotate just fine, but you may want to add teeth in a particular section to make sure that you don't get dropouts or that a gear can't self-release from its mate. Um, there is a center button that you can click here, which will bring two gears back to their original uh, shapes. And again, you can create inside or outside uh, gears from any shape that you've drawn. Beware of shapes that are impossible. Um, let's load a shape which is pretty much impossible. Say this one. Um, as you can see from the gear on the left, it's uh, quite an odd shape. The program has already tried to correct it to allow it to become a gear. And in this case, it almost passes muster. In fact, with a little bit of sanding, you could probably build those two objects as a gear. Uh, if we hit the click button and reset our center, you can see the gear changes shape as Gerotic tries to take more and more of the original gear shape into, uh, uh, into an allowable range. 
<coughs> so that's it for this release. You're free to play with it. As I said, look in the uh, Gerotic, fo Gerotic Motion uh, Gear Data Centro folder to uh, get some DXFs that you can load. And if you have Vectric, you're free to draw a DXF. You have to draw it as a single shape. I would recommend that you load any of my DXF examples so that you can see how I've done them. They are basically just a drawing of a closed curve. Um, you'll quickly discover what the rules are in terms of what you can do with that curve and what's possible. There will be another video, of course, as CTM approaches a usable release. Thanks for watching.